big battle that will be ensuing between Nigeria and Morocco. The host nation of the Women African Mob Nation is taking place there uh, tonight. By 9 p.m., Nigerians are expecting their darling team, Super Falcons, to do us proud. They won it nine times, and they are going in for the ten times. The one they have been tagged, been tagged La Decima. Hopefully, they will be able to scoop this. Welcome here on the show, 360 Sport. On Trust CV, I am Adeni Aji Shafe. We have to look at this far, this particular match already has been tagged five big one between Super Falcons and Atlas Lanases of Morocco. Joining me to talk sport is Chiledum Ohanusi. Good to have you. Well, thank you so much, Adeni. Good one. Now, starting with the fourth story Super Falcons, uh, Atlas Lanases battle for semi finals. The battle for finals, rather, because today they are playing the semi final, and that whoever, whoever wins will actually qualify for finals. Well, big match there between Nigeria and Morocco. Morocco, the host nation, they have the support of uh, a lot of people who will be at the stadium to see how they can at least uh, play against us. And also, we know that Super Falcons, they are, more, they are very, very experienced in this competition. But though uh, this year, uh, this uh, edition has been a bit tough for the ladies, but <laughs> this evening or tonight, yeah, um, do you think your team can try on? We don't, we don't have a reason not to fly. Hmm. Uh, Ajiba Day has been a clear leader of that team hmm. in, in absence of uh, Aziza Toshola and maybe Desire of Aran um, the I must say, uh, Morocco will have by now achieved their achieved their objectives. Mm. They've become the first Arab country to qualify for the World Cup. They've become the first African country from the Maghreb Africa to qualify for the World Cup. So I think they, somehow, even if anything happens today, because it's going to happen, I guess the Falcons should have it easy. Um, the fluffing of the alliance against South Africa is something different. And this particular one, I give it I make the call in favor of the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Um, for Radi Wandrum, the coach, uh, you should understand that uh, the criticism we, the media in Nigeria, have mounted against him is very justified. Mm. Yeah, you, because we paid you a lot of money to transform our team from a continental champion to world beaters. That is to say, we knew already that we had Africa in our pockets. So we want you to make this team that a team that can compete favorably at the you know, global stage, which has not been so since 1991, you know, when we qualify for the quarterfinals and you know, so on. So I want to believe that uh, we, when we call him to pay him all this amount of money, it should be easy for him. If we paid Ukeri Auche 250,000 naira a month, a, a, I mean, a month to deliver the AFCON for us, and he did, she did so. In fact, we owed him some, uh, sometimes four months, five months before we paid him. I mean, the NFF owed her. Uh, so if she did that and uh, delivered the AFCON and World Cup ticket, and we even won, I think, a, ma a match at the World yes, Cup. Yes, So Van you know, should be able to pocket this. But I have fears about the final that you talked about. Mm. You what know, was the fear? Yes, I have fears. Uh, you know, today, tonight, we've already qualified for the World Cup. Good one for him. Today we are going to beat Morocco tonight mm. because we have the superior um, hunger, we have the mind, be, better mindset, and uh, you know when we go against uh, uh, South Africa, my fear is age. Okay, you mean our player? Yes, our my ladies. fear is age and motivation. Okay, you, let me let me ask this. Yeah, already people are already tipping South Africa to qualify. What if Zambia actually beat South Africa? Zambia um, also will have realized their own ambitions because this championship. No because Zambia went to the, we are the Zambia defeated South Africa on their way to qualifying for the Olympics. So no one is actually looking at Zambia. Yes, but that they can but, do but what Zambia will do, Zambia what Zambia will do is what they've done. You know, there is the, the, the boys have to or the girls have to be separated from the women, mm. and this is the time. So obviously, South Africa are in this tournament to answer to questions of Nigeria, and Nigeria are in this tournament to answer to the challenges that South Africa will pose. Already, South Africa has their nose in front because they've already given us one at the group stage. That is when they won that, yeah, that uh, match two, two one. one. Uh -huh. um, the good thing is that as what Oshola scored. But now we can simply zero it this way. Remove a uh, mark out as is at Oshola in that final. 
that we are imagine, imagining if it, if it happens, Nigeria versus uh, South Africa. And look at goalkeeper Chiama Khan Madozi, who is, has been also another outstanding player for the Super Falcons. Then we will be in a sort of uh, problem. Um, I mean, after this tournament, whether we win, lose, or anything, before going to the World Cup, we must look at the ages of our players. The time to rebuild is now. Mm. As I, told Shola, as I did say last time that I was here, she was not known for getting injured every time. But when age comes, a lot of things come. When the man will be fast aging, then you look at, yeah, if you look, even if you look at the pictures here uh, that we saw earlier on, they are very suggestive. They tell you the story. They say, oh, Ryan, how many years, you know, it is. although some people say, uh, when women grow older, they are stronger. Mm. But I think that has to do with the whites, not the blacks. Mm. You, you understand now? So uh, we need to see a little bit more of, uh, inject a little bit more, like the faith. We, every, everybody was saying that she restored faith in Nigerian uh, uh, football. We need to see a little bit more of these uh, local players from Bayelsa United. Monday Gifts. Monday Gifts, sorry, I said, I yes. said faith, gift. I said gift to Nigeria. So we need to see them um, uh, given that ray of exposure, uh, though controlled, Way rather me probably that is where Andy Wanderum has the edge, mm. you know. When you, you, the, the methodology of exposing players, if you do it wrongly, the player gets the finger the fingers burnt, criticism comes, and he withdraws back to the share. So, I want to believe that uh, the organizers have done so many uh, so, the, so well in Morocco. I've even heard of classification games, and more importantly, teams like Senegal and Cameroon Come, yes, that make, didn't they, qualify will now be going for the intercontinental uh, continental playoffs, which means Africa could end up with five or six uh, player uh, countries at the World Cup. Good one for uh, Infantino, good one for FIFA, and uh, uh, let Amaju Penic not waste his time claiming that uh, because even if Super Falcons win this competition, that that is why people should consider him for a third term. Believe me, any other FA chairman, including me, can take su this Super Falcons, a well governor Super Falcons that used to convoke everybody, uh, you know, at the local <laughs> scene. We can, everybody can take it out to win. He should come back home, prepare for elections, and hand over. You know, f failure for of, of the World Cup means we are losing a lot of money, we are losing a lot of resources. Our players, just over the weekend, how many of them? Basi has moved to Ajax. Uh, we, you know, we see players moving from Aribo, Nigerian players, Aribo, Aribo moves, moving. Samson, so Taiwan, these are players that should go to the world stage, you know, get bigger clubs, get bigger offers, repatriate this money, this That's dollar Nigeria. that is cast in Nigeria, and we solve a lot of problems we have here and you are claiming because uh, the Super Falcons are doing well, that, that gives you a ray of hope that you may be coming back for a third time. To do what? He has, for eight years, shown us all his tricks. Good enough. We knew what he won and the many he didn't win. I respect him. I, uh, you know, but he cannot talk us out of the street talk and, you know, planting stories through a lot of yellow page journalists, you know, that uh, feel uh, the, the best thing they can do is to come and uh, glorify, uh, write good, you know, uh, PR stories for people. In fact, I don't, I don't, but, but uh, you know, uh, it, it made sense that he ran back from Morocco to come and be at the venue of COP presentation yesterday in uh, Bayelsa because the head of women football, Aisha Falode and the co in the NFL, they should be handling uh, the Super Falcons uh, issue. And when they make it to the final, the FA president can go there. But I hear that in a bid to become, um, the, the, to, in, to perpetuate himself in office, almost every turn, uh, Jack, Dick and Harry, all the FA chairmen, uh, have been flown to Morocco, uh, a lot of dollars are flying, and somebody even mentioned uh, a budget of 1.2 billion naira should be enough to make him um, stay on as a FA president. I said, this is scandalous. Has it gotten to this? It was a millicon in uh, terms of uh, politics. It's mm. my turn. Now, this somebody is saying, oh, it's a matter of 1.2, uh, if you have 1.2 billion, that you win it. When will honest clear-hearted and clear-minded uh, people with vision and drive take 
over position of responsibility. We'll be coming to that. We've been talking concerning Super Falcons versus uh, Atlas Lions of Morocco. Well, you have to digress a bit to talk about Nigerian football. Too. We'll be talking about that. Well, we're still talking about our ladies. Uh, the battle is on and tonight by 9 p.m. They just have to fly high or higher than they flew against Cameroon because Atlas Lionesses, they will not want to take it for granted. Being the fact that they will be playing at the front of their fans. But then Morocco, the fact that Morocco are trying to see how they can make it, they've qualified for the World Cup, but they want to be at the finals and they also want to see if they can host a win. A big battle between Zambia and South Africa will also be coming up earlier on by 6 p.m. And now that fight will be a big one because a lot of people are underrating Zambia. The Chef Polo Polo can actually surprise uh, the Bayana Bayana. Even though they are very good, they are strong, they won all their games, but anything can happen. We never can tell if... Zambia will actually come to the party. Now, coming back to Super Falcon story, uh, from the way it is, uh, when we look at the old players that are in the team, the senior players, so-called, and then uh, maybe two of the own player, own base player that was picked, Gift Monday and uh, the, uh, the other. Uh, you look at now, Nigeria needs to, if we eventually able to win this tournament, or even if we don't win it, it is high time very, very essential now that we begin to find a way of fizzling out this old guy, old, old uh, ladies, because uh, it will affect us at the World Cup. They said um, aging ladies. Mm, uh, aging, okay, good mm. one. Aging ladies now, because one, the World Cup is not a child's play. Yeah. And we've seen what the European leagues are doing right now in their own competition. How fast, how very articulated. If you look at the way they play football, you'll be wondering, can we actually play against these ladies? Okay. Norway, Sweden, Denmark, France, US, <laughs> Japan. All these countries are so fast. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of them can actually defeat some mainstream. Uh, well, uh, we, need, we will wait to see. We'll wait to see. But uh, the fact is that uh, um, since women football was introduced, it has, started, it has, it, it has grown from mm -hmm. leaps and in bounds. And um, let me say, even if our league was given all the attention it required, probably would have been on a better pedestal. We've played at the Under-20 World Cup also, every other edition of the Under-20 World Cup. That is the Fal um, Fal Falconets, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, and now we're going to the World Cup. So that gives us a good opportunity. The Flamingos probably have also qualified. Yes. So it's just to look at the players those championships probably take the best out of them and mark them with the mark super them, falcons. Mark them with the super falcons and probably that is i say uh, the job that uh, world run will be doing um you know sometimes we say these players are old but when you remove them then you find out that there is something that you've missed they actually yeah, offer. you know they, they, they offer a lot of stability you know what the work they do behind so but what we're trying to say is that you don't if football has come to a, an a, a, uh, a stage whereby a lot of science and meds and science and uh, um, research is done into it. And one thing that you cannot replace is uh, the hunger, that passion that they use, and the lack of fear, you know, that they have, you know, in going to do what they want to do and how they do it. So let me believe that uh, for now, they are very important in the team. But our team is aging. So if between now and the next World Cup, or between now. You know, and after that World Cup, everything must be done to find a way of rebranding this team. The only way to continue to dominate is to continue to reinvent. Now, as we are reinventing, let me take you, let's digress a bit to Nigerian sport development. Uh, for, for a while now, we've been talking about this, and uh, let me seek your opinion concerning Nigerian sport development. Is it actually going well, rapid, slow, or fast? First of all, what are we building on? Nothing. Well, recently they submitted the we are, master plan. We are building, we are building the master on plan. No, no, the, master the plan. The master plan mm. has to be anchored on a sports plan. Mm. First of all, so we don't even have a bill in the National Assembly of, that came into existence since 1999. We don't have a sports bill. But we have bill for politicians, we have bill for disabled, we have bill for uh, health, we have bill for in all the other sectors, but for sports, mm -hmm. there's no sports bill. And because there's no sports bill that holds on the trunk, we don't have how 
NFF should run, how the super federations, the elite federations should run, how we should reward our athletes, how um, you know, the minister should relate with the National Sports Commission or the Sports Ministry. You know, so everything just goes and uh, like that. It's a pity. Uh, I want to say our sports is like either stagnated or retrogressing. Um, let me give you a clear example. The handball team went to Egypt, cash strapped, no investment from government. They got there and they failed in their task to qualify for the IHS, IHF World Cup. As the one of the losers, they had to play classification games. Yeah, yeah, Yesterday, they needed to play the for the fair, fair play trophy or the trophy that will be won by those that didn't qualify for the World Cup, the, the four teams that didn't qualify for the World Cup. At the end of it, oh, Nigeria still lost to Gabon um, in that particular Ma, game. Yeah. So meaning out of five games they played, they lost three and won two. What I'm trying to say is, if this team had been able to win yesterday, even that fair play trophy, the sports ministry will have opened a vista to have them received shake hands with uh, them, do photographs as part of his achievements in sports. Mm. And that's what we are seeing lately. He has declined interface between himself and the traditional media. So what, there's only always one channel of communication between um, the sports ministry and Nigerians. Remember, even the Olympics, they will tell you, even FIFA will tell you that the sporting media is what keeps sports going. The media, without, without the media, we don't know how will we assert, assess how sports of this, grow. Uh, yes. So when you go plant your stories in the social media and on, the, on only what the minister wants us to know, what he wants to say, without allowing the traditional media to also interrogate some of his policies, you know, ask him, sir. But we also heard of this. You are talking about. Ten point, you, you talked about the 10-year ten ten master, master plan, and he said he's going to make sure that they are fully implemented. How many months does he have to go that he will implement what his predecessors put together have not been able to you know, implement? So there are certain questions that we, we could sit face to face, eyeball to eyeball, to ask him, because we are also stakeholders. I wrote a comment in one of the platforms, and somebody said I should be humane when criticizing I said, no, I'm not. I'm a product of the Nigeria Premier League. I say it on air. I, as an honest referee, I paid my tuition through the university as a referee because I got about eight games every season. And if that amounts to 50,000 naira per game, that means four, I, 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 I can see I have about 400,000 naira from the Nigeria Professional Football Boy. League. And not, I, there are other games outside the f Professional Football League that I also officiate. So I was able to go to school, finish my career. So I cannot just close my eyes and see people like Salih Abubakar that Nigeria have spent so much to train and football administration. The Bauchi State Government have sent so, spent so much to train. I can't see Sheikh Udiko run rules that are contrary to football and could destroy even the fabric of football, and I keep quiet. If I keep quiet, I'm doing the service to myself. So I told a colleague that, you know, said I should be a little bit. I said, no, I don't have anything to hold uh, back for. I have to say the truth as it were. You know, we cannot see illegalities growing and becoming tradition. And that's what is happening. For Sunday Diary, our sports minister, I salute him, um, but the way he has decided to run the sports ministry is really, really, um, I, I, you know, some, some of you, he, he calls you to say, oh, we want to have a forum mm -hmm. with his editors. And uh, he tells you what he wants to do. He explains why a lot of things have not been done right. But the natural thing is that you are, if, for, for instance, a committee was to come to submit a report to you, we should ask him, sir, Okay, if the committee submitted a report to you and said, FIBA spoke with you and said, you should call back the NBBF Warren, uh, that is, I'm talking about the NBBF crisis Basketball. now. I should call back Kida to lead. We should ask you, for how long is Kida going to midwife the peace process? Because you are, you are asking him to make sure they restore 
they solve all the problems that led to government interfering in this uh, particular... Well, we will ask him, uh, how long is Kida going to stay here? Is it for eternity? Is it for the four-year duration that, you know, is in contest? So at the end of it all, what has happened? Uh, the other factions say they are still going back to the trenches. The war continues. So what has he achieved? Nothing. So from the way it is now, uh, Nigerian sport development has not been... Uh, it's slow. It's slow. You cannot compare what we have now to what we used people to like AKG and then Amos Adamu gave to Nigeria. You mm. can't compare them. You can't compare. Um, those guys had uh, the heart of gold, and we over-criticized them too. You know, and still, like I remember Amos Adamu will say, it is not a privilege to you if we take you along with us to international competitions. You are the eye of Nigeria. It is what you see there about we and the athletes that you report to them. Even Mr. President takes his own presidential crew members along when he's traveling. So you will see them reporting either from NTA or from Radio Nigeria, for AIT or from uh, Trust TV. You have correspondence at the villa that follows the president wherever he goes. But it is not so here. You know, the minister, they look at the media, they even try to plant discord among the various, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, they don't speak with one voice. You know, hunger is in the land. And because uh, there is hunger in the land, a lot of people uh, that are not uh, forthright, uh, or maybe don't have the prerequisite, uh, even the moral st standing or professional, uh, don't have the professional and uh, ethics uh, of the, this thing high in their, uh, they, they can chicken in and a lot of uh, things have been done a little bit wrongly. I just believe that um, um, we will get there. We will get there, um, but you don't. In sports, it takes a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue to dance in circles. It takes us to nowhere. It takes us to nowhere. We've been uh, digressing a bit from Falcons' match against uh, Morocco tonight. Uh, we have to talk about our own sport development. It has not been the way we want it to be. Really, we need to look at this sector and take it very seriously. After all, they say sport can actually end Nigeria a whooping sum of 25 billion, if well and next, if well and next. That word is there. And now we have to look at sport also uh, getting away all the issue of uh, social vices in the society. A lot of people are giving the chance, the template to at least compete, and they know that they will get what it takes to be a professional in that particular sector. They will never go back. They will go into it and they will do well for Nigeria, giving us a food of thought in sport development in Nigeria. Now, she's talking about the Super Falcons. I want to pick a point. Uh, Super Falcons, Morocco. You believe they are going to win? Nigeria will win, but in football, mm. never say never, according to Asavenga. Mm. Uh, it depends on their form on the day, uh, not uh, paper. Paper form. Uh, form. <laughs> That's why sometimes uh, we pundit, after we finish talking, we go home and, you know, bury our faces in shame. Because uh, the math will yes, go the way you actually... Uh, but one good thing about, personally, myself, I, don't, I won't talk sports because of, oh, I'm an Arsenal fan, or oh, Arsenal must win this match. Mm. Uh, you know, you have a lot of hearts. Uh, ache. <laughs> hearts ache, and uh, I want to believe that uh, we have everything to intimidate them. We have everything to bully them. We have all the experience to fall back to, and the hunger is there. Mm. Nigeria wants to, the Super Falcons are not happy. Uh, they were humbled by South Africa. I think they want a quick, you know, response. Like a quick response. They mm. need to settle this issue there. And, um, and I've already told you that I still have even more fears because sometimes you're coming to avenge the first lap and you get even another one. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, they are so super far it, all, this, all this could be all this could be funny, but for the Moroccans, they will pay for lack of experience today. Mm. Mm, I think so. And uh, another good thing is that we have. Female referees from Nigeria doing the country proud in, Madu. Uh, in uh, Morocco. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about Madu and Co. And uh, even those that will be going to the World Cup from Africa, like the Rwandan female referee, where everybody, the officiating has been good. And um, we're looking forward to 
captain Onamaya Obi and the goalkeeper Nadozie, you know, doing their things. They, 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 they've done so well. I like the uh, comment I read from uh, uh, Onamaya Obi. She said, despite people criticizing her age, she has a cotton wool with which she has blocked her ear. Mm. I believe it all work well for Nigeria for good. Hopefully, uh, Super Falcons will triumph in this game against Morocco tonight by 9 p.m. We wish them all the best as they prosecute that particular game. We support you, Super Falcons. And before we go quickly, let's run through some transfer stories that has to do with uh, Tottenham World Sport prepares 14.4 million pounds for Barcelona for Memphis Depay. Who doesn't want to move? He doesn't want to go to Tottenham World Sport, but right now, Tottenham World Sport, I say they are coming for him 14.4 million pounds. Another one, Barcelona to bid for Sevilla defender, Yus Konde. Yus Konde has been a player that Chelsea have been pursuing for a while but now Barcelona wants to solve that particular move and let's see where it will be ending. Napoli, Napoli wants Chelsea goalkeeper Kepa Ariza Balaga on loan. They want to get him to uh, the city of Naples as they call them and now they want him to join them on loan. Well, let's see if uh, it will be happening because uh, he just has to get his act together. Netherlands, Frankie Dijon is opposed to joining Manchester United or any English club. Why? Only him knows that he doesn't want to go to Manchester United or England. He would prefer to go to Bayern, according to the news reaching us. And also, news says uh, Dybala. Dybala actually has agreed three uh, years deal with Roma. That's still coming up. And let's see what will be happening concerning that uh, deal about Dybala joining AS Roma. That's it, talking about transfer stories. And for tonight, Nigeria versus Morocco. We're wishing our ladies all the best and hope, hoping that they will win their game. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. And uh, it's time also for us to uh, move the NPFL forward. Mm. As I did say, the structures of football in this country have to be galvanized. And so we, let us have players also move the way you're reading out uh, this uh, Diabara, Martinez, Argentine players move. Let's see more Nigerians. Mm. Um, Our own. Please to see what happened just last week. Uh, but I want to see more of such movements. Good one out there. That's it on 360 Sport on Trust TV. A good one with Chinedu Hanusi, who has been with us talking sport. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.